The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. And good morning to you. You're listening to the Big Dog WIFO FM in Jessup 105.5 on your FM dial. Big Dog Country Radio. Butch Shepard here with you along with Bob Morgan on this Monday morning, the 23rd day of March. Now time for the world famous Butch and Bob show brought to you by Nips Car Wash located on Highway 301 South just past McDonald's on the left and by Murphy Builder Supply located right in downtown Jessup on Northeast Broad Street. And Bob, how you doing? Good. Good. Next right. Mondays with the Meeks. We got Stephen Meeks on the phone. Stephen, I'm kind of surprised you're calling in because the session shut down, but we appreciate you calling in anyway. Well, good morning. I just wanted to call in and say hello and touch base and uh, get a little information out that, uh, that obviously as we face unprecedented times and unprecedented measures uh, in our state and country, I uh, just wanted to call in and say hello and uh, just kind of let you all know what's going on from our perspective and, and what we're hearing from, uh, from the governor. Tell us what we're hearing. You know, we'd like to get the update. Well, the, the one thing I would continue to say is, first of all, uh, great appreciation to our healthcare community and our first responders who are on the, the front lines of, of this epidemic that we're facing. And um, I uh, can say that with certainty, after uh, listening to some of the stories of first responders across our state, you know, the the, the one thing that that they face every day as they go out is not knowing whether they're going to be exposed to this and take it home to their families and there's great concern and obviously as, uh, as test kits become available that we're trying to make sure that first responders have access to those um, as well as some other uh, aspects of the community to make sure that they're protected but uh, so, so thanks to our health care community and also to our uh, in Wayne County School Nutrition Program who continues to help keep, uh, keep kids fed during this time uh, again, this is unprecedented times that we're living in, and uh, great people are stepping forward and helping take care of the things that they do on a daily basis when we're not facing epidemics such as this. So thanks uh, thanks to help keeping the uh, our school kids fed. Uh, we've had uh, four state legislators at this point to be to test positive, uh, four senators. Uh, as we know, we had a, a member of the Senate that uh, attended the session uh, exhibiting symptoms but had not received a test yet for that had been uh, conducted previously or the results of that test so uh, right now i don't know of any in the state house that has uh, has been diagnosed so we continue to hope that uh, members of the house uh, remain uh, uh, coronavirus free uh checking the numbers this morning from the department of public health we have 620 cases so far uh as well as 25 deaths in georgia uh, the one thing that I would ask the uh, the public to do is you're looking for information. Uh, I know there's great information out there, but the most up-to-date and most accurate information is on the Department of Public Health website. That's dph.georgia.gov. Uh, is keeping track of all the current cases and newly confirmed. They are updating that website twice daily at noon and 7 p.m., so... Uh, as you're hearing things that, that may or uh, may not be firsthand, I would encourage you to check the website just to confirm that before uh, we start spreading the news that a case has been found in various the locations um, here in our community just to make sure that we have the most up-to-date information. I do believe there's two additional cases that have been confirmed in Glenn County. They were at two. Uh, they're now at four cases. Uh, Charlton County has one. Uh, see this morning, there's a new case in um, Coffee County as well as one over in Clinch County. And uh, the one thing that we uh, we continue to ask people to do is that if you are exhibiting symptoms, uh, fever, cough, difficulty breathing, uh, check in, call your local physician. Uh, don't go to the emergency room in case it may be a positive case that we don't spread to others that are that are in the medical facilities, but touch base with your local physician and or um, call the uh, the 800 number that's been set up, which is 844-442-2681, and the Department of Public Health can help provide additional information as um, as you're working through that. So just wanted to call and give the, those couple updates, and uh, as we continue to hear more information from the governor of interest, we'll be sure to pass that along. Know the White House and the federal government is working diligently to uh, to pass legislation to keep the economy moving and um, and and really 
take unprecedented measures during this time. Stephen, you mentioned testing. You know, that's the big question people ask. Are the tests available in the state of Georgia? There are tests available. Obviously, the test kits are still very limited. But the governor is working very diligently with uh, federal partners and private resources or private sources to uh, to get more test kits in Georgia. Um, we are, from, from what they're giving us, they are prioritizing uh, those tests. So if a lot of physicians are testing patients for uh, flu for strep and for other for other um, uh, potential uh, uh, issues uh, before they actually administer the uh, the corona test kit uh, to test for it specifically. Uh, but there are test kits available. They're very limited, and I know that the Department of Public Health and GEMA, as well as the governor's office, are all working to help coordinate um, how those test kits are distributed. And hopefully, uh, this week we'll hear some positive information in terms of uh, having some more kits uh, readily available, but I know that those are that they are out, they are limited and uh, they're trying to prioritize how uh, how those are used in the most effective way. And as we all know, the session is on hold. Any idea from the governor when the session will reconvene? Is there a deadline we, that they're looking at? We, we don't know the answer to that yet. Uh, we did whenever Last Monday during the special session, which we went in to really grant the governor unprecedented power uh, to do what he needs to do in this state to help control this pandemic, uh, we went ahead and signed a letter of intent notifying the governor that we would return 30 days later uh, to re-extend those powers to him should that be necessary. Uh, so right now that is kind of on the radar as to when we will return for, for that specific issue. But obviously, as uh, as the end of the fiscal year draws near of uh, June 30th, it's, it's mandatory that we'll have to go back and finish the budget. But we do not know yet uh, what kind of time frame we're looking at uh, for doing that. Okay, Stephen. Well, again, we appreciate you calling in. Monday's with Stephen Meeks. Uh, appreciate the update like you. We've been given that same website for the most accurate information. Again, the Department of Public Health, as you mentioned, they update that twice a day at 12 noon and 7 p.m., and they have right. it county by county. So, again, that is the most accurate information, and, again, that's where we're encouraging people to go to as well. If you want the most accurate information, the Department of Public Health website it has it updated twice a day at 12 noon and 7 p.m., and, again, as you mentioned, that's the best place to get the information. So, again, we appreciate you emphasizing that. Always good to talk to you. Stay safe, and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you okay, again on Monday. Thank you. Y'all too. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Stephen. Right. Right. Representative uh, Stephen Meeks, a special guest here on the world-famous Butch and Bob Show on Mondays with Meeks. Hopefully we'll still have Tuesdays with Tillery and Wednesdays with Workheiser on Wednesday. Bob, we got uh, several guests, including um, our recreation director, right? Well, the recreation director, Beck Eccles, wants to come in. Again, there's been a lot of confusion on what's going on with the recreation. Again, there's been a lot of criticism for the rec department that's unnecessary because they don't have anything to do with what's going on out there because they're not functioning like most people, they shut it down. So, uh, Speck just wants to come in and clarify what's taking place. And, you know, if you have any questions, you can call the rec department at 427 5915. But, Speck, I appreciate you coming and just clarify what's taking place with the recreation here in Wayne County. Well, thank you, Bob, for having me. Like I said, a lot's going uh, has been going on. We have a lot of uh, changes since I talked to you last week. Um, the rec department is still. Open and operational, you know, Monday through Friday. The, the, the office is open, and our employees are still getting at it. But uh, there's a lot of changes. Um, we have postponed our season to April 13th. Um, that's going to probably determine, you know, if they go back to school, things like that. So, you know, right now we just postponed our season. All practices have been canceled. There's no more practices out there, but the fields are open. So if you want to go out there on your own, you know, that's your business. But, but the Red Department has canceled all practices. Um, the, the upcoming track season has been canceled. Um, I've been talking with uh, Steve Carr from GRPA for the last couple of weeks and our district commissioners. Uh, GRPA has decided to cancel district and state track. So that, that put our track on, on, on hold there for this year. Um, GRP will also make a decision on April 1st on whether they're going to continue with district baseball and uh, softball and st on the district and state level. So I figure, you know, by then we should just determine what we're going to do with our season and, you know, determine what they're going to do with school. But like I said, 
Um, I had a lot of phone calls this weekend about is Lake Gray still open. Right now it is still open. Um, all our facility rentals are closed until the 13th of April, so you can't rent no facilities. Um, but uh, that's where we stand at right now. Like I says, a lot of people has been saying that, uh, you know, the rec department, we don't have nothing to do with GRPA. We are, we are totally different from the GRPA. So just because the GRPA does this don't mean that, you know, uh, GHSS don't mean that GRPA does it. So we just, we, we on a different timeline than they are. So, like, the school system, everything's just on hold till you know, basically the end of the right. month, and then we're going to reassess after that. Reassess, like I said, we tried to, we pushed our season back a little bit, so, but we, we have canceled practices right now until further notice, but like I said, I, I think it's all going to determine if we go back to school or not, where, where people's going to play or not. Okay, well, we appreciate you coming and clarifying everything. Like I said, I know your department took a lot of criticism because people are there practicing right. thinking it was organized by the rec department but it was yeah, not but they were they were practicing bob they were not mandatory practices they were up mandatory, to the coaches, right. coaches. Um, if the coaches want to get the kids out there but a lot of parents was were scared that the kids was going to get punished or the kids is not going to get punished if they if we start playing games tomorrow they miss the practice we got in our rules that if they if they show up to a game they still play and get the bat so no no kids gonna get punished for missing practices so just wanted to clarify that but like i said practices are canceled right now until further notice are sign-ups still taking place, or is that closed nothing, up? Nothing. We, we're, ne- we're not doing no sign-ups right now and nothing at the rate department. But we are open, you know, take phone calls and whatever we need to do. But there's no sign-ups going on and, no, and like I said, no facility rentals. All right, gotcha. Okay, though. We appreciate you coming in. Good to see you. And thank you, Bob. If you need to get any more information, just get a test and we'll, All right. we'll pass it along. I sure will. Thank you all okay. for having me. Thank all right. You. Thank you, Spade. All right. We'll be back more of the world-famous Butch and Bob Show. More guests in the green room. Your WIFO forecast. Good morning, cloudy, slight chance of showers in the morning, then a better chance of showers in the afternoon. South winds becoming southwesterly, highs upper 70s. Mostly cloudy, 40% chance of showers, low 60s for tonight. Tomorrow, partly sunny, 20% chance of showers, highs in the low 80s. Then Wednesday, mostly sunny, slight chance of morning showers, highs in the low 80s. And Thursday, sunshine, highs mid 80s. Georgia meteorologist John Weatherby in the GNN Weather Center. I don't understand why mom hits me so hard or why I don't get to eat every day or what that stuff dad makes in the garage is or why my chest always hurts so bad. A lot of adults say they care about me and other kids like me. Most of them will never do anything to help us, but a few will. Are you one of the few? Nobody longs for a loving family more than a child. By becoming a part of Tri-County CASA, you can help hundreds of children who live right here in your community. Tri-County CASA is currently looking for volunteers who have a heart for helping abused and neglected children. If you'd like to help make a difference, become a volunteer. Contact Pam Holmes at Tri-County CASA at 912-367-0064. Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO, 105.5 FM and Jessup. We continue on with the world-famous Butch and Bob show. Bob, more guests here in the studio with us. Yeah, got Stanley Todd in here with the guest talking about hospice and that's the topic. Tell us what's going on, Stanley. Hospice and grief support. We're thankful to be here this morning and uh, considering all that's going on and uh, changes that are happening, things that we're having to do new now because of... Uh, coronavirus uh, but I was thinking as I was on the way here this morning uh, with hospice uh, it doesn't change uh, we we're still on the front line and um, you know there are people out there that uh, unfortunately um, are in that time of life and they need this this level this skill of care and we work with a wonderful organization hospice of South Georgia and I, I just want to take a, a minute or two just to commend uh, these uh, our employees, our staff, they they're out there doing um, you know what 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 they have to do to help take care of people, and it's important that we continue to do that. And as we do it, we're going to do it in ways that uh, that we're safe, that our patients and our families are safe, and um, just keeping everything in mind of what's what's happening. But I but I am thankful for our staff, and I want to introduce a, a new staff. Uh, uh, person that we're so thankful to have with us now. This is uh, the Reverend Fred Anderson. Uh, Fred uh, started with us a few weeks ago, and we're so fortunate to have him on our staff. He is our new bereavement coordinator. One thing that we do in hospice, 
uh, that we continue to do after a, uh, a patient uh, passes away is that we follow up with our families for the for the next 13 months. And a lot of people don't know that that, that is an offering uh, of hospice, but it's one of those great uh, things that we continue to do uh, for families after we lose a, a, a patient. So Fred is... He is our is our bereavement coordinator, and, and we're glad to have him. and And uh, he's going to share some important information with us too this morning as we as we go along. I, I just want to, you know, say that one thing that does not stop is uh, people people continue to to uh, lose their life. Uh, there there's still death, and it's one of those things we don't really want to talk about a whole lot uh, someone said one time that uh, there's there's a lot of lessons taught about what we can gain but not a whole lot of lessons taught about how to lose and, uh, and that's unfortunate uh, people need to know that there are uh, there are things that, that can be offered to them to help them through their time of, of loss and grief and so we offer a grief support group and in the past, we've invited people to come to us, and typically that's happened on Monday evenings at 6 o'clock. It's a nine-week uh, program that we offer, and it's community-minded. Anybody can, can come that would like to come to that. But right now, we're asking people not to come, and that's sort of, that's sort of hard uh, because uh, we know that people uh, can, um, can do well as they go through that uh, setting. So, uh, as we have thought about it, uh, instead of we inviting people to come to us, we're going to take this program to them. And, uh, and we can do that. There are certain ways that that can happen. So, I, I'm going to turn to Fred and, and uh, get him to, uh, we've come up with a few ways that we think that we can do this and be successful at it. So, uh, Fred, uh, anything you want to say and then talk about those points maybe? Sure. Um, thank you for that, and thank you for that introduction. Um, we do work with a, a great organization, and uh, like Stanley already said, props to our administration and, and those that we work with to pro provide the highest level of care possible. We are um, trying to be as creative as possible, still doing some things that we would normally do, but maybe in different ways, like Stanley said. Um, one thing that we're doing is... Uh, Stanley mentioned that we're not setting up these meetings for nine weeks to come to our office to have this grief support care, but we are offering to go to wherever you are, in the home, at your office, whatever is a convenient location to come and meet with you or other family members. And again, I want to reiterate uh, what Stanley said. Um, you know, these support group, these care groups that we offer for nine weeks in our office are, are for anyone in the community, and I love that about hospice. Uh, you, do, you don't have to be a hospice patient or family member of a patient to receive uh, care. We're community-minded. We love our community in Wayne County, and we want you to know we're here for you. If you've never been in our office or if you've never been... Um, provided care for by a nurse or any of our administration, you're still eligible for this grief support, and we want to be here for our community as well. So we, we are offering in-home visits or, or setting up a, a, a visit for wherever you would, of your choice, wherever you would like for us to come and offer this same level of grief care and this grief support. Our uh, grief counselors would, would line that up with you. If you call into our office, we can set that up. Another avenue of care during this time, during this unusual time, is our Facebook page. Um, we're updating our, our Facebook page and providing grief support there. And you could post a comment or something on there if you need some support. Um, in whatever way you can post your comments on our page and our grief counselors will get back with you and uh, and line that up for you. But we will also offer different things on our Facebook page, whether that's an article or, or whatever other avenue we can support you from our Facebook page. Our web page is similar in nature in that we're we're in the process of updating some things on our web page. So you can go to Hospice of South Georgia, Inc.'s web page. Uh, it's hospice 
uh, OGA.org, and you can click on there. And under grief support, there are articles for different seasons that you're going through. We're updating that presently. Uh, so you'll have different – maybe you say, well, I'm in month one. Is that any different than month 12 of dealing with the loss of my family member? You can click on some different articles that will guide you there, as well as all our contact information is there, and our grief counselors will help you through that as well. So there's some helps on our on our web page. Also, by telephone, you can call into our office, and our grief counselors are uh, available. And if they happen to be out of the office, they will call you back and um, provide counseling and help during your time uh, of needed support. And so by telephone, uh, we are offering support. Also, uh, one unique way that we've come up with for this um, absence of this nine-week program. I say absence because absence in our office, but one thing we've come up with, it, since it was a nine-week program in our office, our, our grief counselors are writing articles to be put in the Press Sentinel for the next nine weeks. And then we'll, after those nine weeks, we'll evaluate and see when we need to do that again. But for nine weeks, Stanley Todd, myself, Richard Grice will be writing uh, different grief care articles, uh, and they will be in the Press Sentinel every week. So uh, please check out those articles in the Press Sentinel. I'm sure you're, you'll find some some uh, help there, much needed help in your time of, of grief and mourning. And um, that's another thing Stanley and Richard and I are, are doing. So the Press Sentinel is another avenue of help. Also... Um, you may have seen in the paper that uh, we were going to be on the radio Monday, March 31st. But today is not March 31st. Uh, today is March 23rd. And so there was a, a glitch in, in our ad in the paper. But uh, apologies for that. But um, we had scheduled with Butch and Bob for this morning. But we'll be evaluating that after this morning, too. And we may be in the next weeks, uh, coming weeks lining up some other times to come in and uh, offer some helps in, in whatever form or fashion that those would look like to do some different things. This morning's kind of an introduction. Maybe in future weeks we could come back and offer some different kinds of, of help to our community that are, that are grieving during this time. But those six ways are some ways that we've come up with. Some of those things aren't any different than what we'd normally do, and some of them are are a good deal different than than what we would normally do but those six uh, areas are some ways that we're reaching out to our community to provide grief support through hospice of south georgia and uh it's been a pleasure the last couple of weeks to work there and we look forward to uh to uh ministering to our community and and uh, providing much needed support to our community of wayne county whom we love and appreciate so much we are thankful for fred and what he's doing and and uh, he, he's doing a, a, a great work in reaching out to people who are grieving. And <clears throat> we have often people calling our office wanting to know if they could find support, um, even though they haven't been under our care. And I, we always say yes to that. It's, that's one of the great um, services that I, I feel our organization uh, is, is able to do and uh, reach out even to those that... Uh, <clears throat> haven't been connected with us in the past and so we're here uh, the, the thing that I, I believe is so important is that people just reach out uh, I, I often um, uh, folks will ask the question when will I start feeling better and that's a, that's a very difficult question to answer uh, the thing is there's, there's certain areas of life that you can um, concentrate on that will help you feel better and one of those main areas is that you that you seek out for help and uh, and that's what grief support is all about it's offering people that assistance uh, to to find ways in which they can learn how to make their loss a part of their life uh, and I know it could be some questions, but, um, you know, people have this misconception that they're going to get over losing somebody. And, I, you know, listen, that, that's not going to happen. It's, not, it's just not going to happen. Uh, you don't get over losing somebody. And unfortunately, I've, I've said in the past, uh, 
uh, earlier in life that you know people needed to get over and move on well that's that doesn't happen that's unfortunate uh comment that's, that's that's a big misconception you don't get over it you you don't resolve death but what you do is you reconcile it in other words uh, you make it a part of who you are and you learn how to move on with life and the highest tribute you can pay to someone that's that's gone on before you is to continue to live your life and that's what we that's what our hope is through offering grief support is to help people find ways in which which they can do that anything else that, anything else that you'd like to add with the grief support through hospice of south georgia on sunset boulevard I've just had a lot of questions about, you know, is, is hospice stopping different things? Like, is hospice uh, stopping their care, whatever? We're a health care organization, so we're not stopping anything. And like I mentioned in, in some of my helps, that we have gotten creative in a few things, but, but most of our things were operating as normal. So please feel free to call on us at hospice and, and know that our care is ongoing. We're not waiting for you to call in. If you've been under hospice care, we're not waiting on you to call in to receive the normal level of support you should receive. We're still providing those things, and we haven't closed our office. Everything's operating as normal. Yeah, and so we're, we're uh, just asking people to... Uh, to keep us in mind, and if there's anything in any way that Fred or any of our other staff can support them through, you know, listen, this is a difficult time again, and there's going to be a lot of ways that people will grieve as they go through this crisis, and uh, so, you know, whatever support we can we can help and give, that's what we want to do. Okay. All right. Bob, any other questions? For our guests this morning, y'all, y'all. y'all are always welcome here on the World Famous Butch and Bob Show. Anytime that y'all want to co- uh, come on, uh, just uh, outstanding, uh, helpful services that y'all provide uh, to the uh, the families out there and to the patients. And uh, just hats off to you, Hospice of South Georgia on Sunset Boulevard here in Jessup. Thank you. And I, I just one one other thing. I, it, we'd love to come back. And when we do, uh, I'd I'd like it to be where uh, people can call in. And if they have questions they about their in. loss, their grief, text in. They text and, in uh, we'll, and we'll be glad to read Hopefully we'll be able to uh, give some help or some ideas about how people can continue to work through their loss. All right. We'll just set it up and we'll be glad to do it for Thank you. you. Thank All you, right. Butch and Bob. All right. We'll be back with the final wrap of the world famous Butch and Bob show in just a moment. The first Doctor's Day observance was March 30th, 1933 in Winder, Georgia. The idea came from Eudora Brown Almond, wife of Dr. Charles Almond. March 30 was the anniversary of the first use of general anesthetic in surgery, which was used in a procedure by Dr. Crawford Long of Jefferson, Georgia. Georgia's Barrow County Medical Society Auxiliary proclaimed the day Doctor's Day. This special day was celebrated by mailing cards to physicians and their spouses and also by placing flowers on the graves of doctors who had passed on, including Dr. Long. President George H.W. Bush signed a resolution recognizing the first National Doctors' Day, March 30th, 1991. This is Jill Blizzard of Wayne Memorial Hospital. In honor of their lifetime commitment to patient care, we salute all physicians on this special day. Wayne Memorial Hospital, caring for the community. You're listening to the world famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup. Butch Hubbard here with you along with Bob Morgan. And Bob, just uh, an excellent, informative interview that you had with Jessup Mayor David Earl Keith. And just, uh, he, he said the right words at the right time so people can um, understand what's going on with the city and the right things to do. I said, just heed everybody's advice. Uh, and go to the right website to get the correct information That's yeah the there was thing. a uh, there was a rumor out over the weekend that somebody in wayne county had tested positive but according to the official reports from the state nobody has i i, I don't know if they ever will I, I for a lot of people they just think it's a matter of uh, uh, if not when um no matter when not if so what is that official website once again bob i know that you have there in front of you for folks to it's updated twice daily on the official reports of uh, reported uh-huh. cases in the state of georgia and how many people have succumbed to it Again, they updated at 12 noon and 7 p.m. It's the Georgia Department of Public Health website. It's https slash dph.georgia.gov slash COVID-19 daily status report. So, okay. again, if you want to get information, 
That's the information website. Also, if you need to call the local hospital, their number is 912-402-7625. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5 p.m. Also, there's a national number to call if you want more information. And that's the statewide hotline number that's open 24-7. That number is 844-442-2681. So, again, be smart. Stay safe. Again, as they say, to avoid large crowds, wash your hands frequently. Stay six feet apart. Do that social distancing. Just try to do what they tell you to do. Yeah, just you do know. what they say to do, and uh, and um, hopefully we'll get through this thing just fine. Uh, I know that uh, stores are still packed, and, and um, they're not practicing social distancing, distancing at the stores, Bob, <laughs> at the uh, supermarkets and uh, places like that where you can get uh, food and uh, just uh, packed and shelves empty, so um, people still uh, panic buying, but hopefully that will, t- uh, uh, you know, taper off and people get back into a regular routine with their with their shopping. But uh, they are packed inside the stores right now, and uh, and I know that uh, some stores have cut back on hours. I know that uh, Walmart has, and uh, other stores have cut back on hours, and uh, trying to. Um, uh, to cater to senior citizens first and things of that sort, uh, trying to do the right things. We've got a lot of local restaurants here in town that are doing either just pickup, drive through or curbside service. Many of them still have their um, uh, their dining rooms open, but they are spreading people apart, you know, six feet apart and uh, things of that sort. So you can still have that in uh, in restaurant experience, but still have that social distancing. So everybody seems to be doing their part as much as they possibly can, and hopefully everybody will. I think the one thing the mayor stressed, I want to stress, you know, please support these local businesses. Oh, you know, yes. You know, because it's important this time that they stay live and active. And like I said, they're providing those drive through windows. So please support your local business as much as possible during right. this time. So. Yeah, a lot of people have a lot of free time now. So they can, uh, yeah. I know right now that the uh, the car manufacturers have offered super incentives on the brand new vehicle. So it's an excellent time to get a new vehicle. I know that um, uh, that uh, stores are discounting right now. And uh, you've got, um, you know, people at home, they can do, you know, like go to Moody's Nursery and get their home and garden stuff and things of that sort to do things around the house and the hardware supply stores to maybe do some projects around the store and things of that around the house and things of that sort. So support those local businesses and uh, get some projects done around the house and and, and enjoy some uh, great takeout food or um, pick up curb outside service or drive through service from a lot of these restaurants and uh, just in, uh, support these local businesses uh, so we can all get through this and uh, and hopefully be back on the right track in a few weeks. But, uh, the school it, but, still providing those meals Tuesdays yep. and Thursdays. We'll run down those sites again tomorrow on the local news. But, again, those are taking place on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So, All right. Anything else, Bob? That's about it. Okay. All right. Have a good day. All right. World Famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by Nips Car Wash, located on Highway 301 South, just past McDonald's there on the left-hand side. Get your car all cleaned up. Uh, right there, that laser-guided car wash and two-cell service bays. Nips Car Wash. Nip, 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 Nips Car Wash, located on Highway 301 South, just past McDonald's. Nip, 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 Nips Car Wash. And by Murphy Builder Supply, where the builders buy, located on Southeast Broad Street and down uh, Northeast Broad Street, excuse me, Northeast Broad Street in downtown Jessup, right down from the big red caboose. The world famous Butch and Bob Show.